As Nigeria commemorates June 12 as Democracy Day and reminisces, some eminent Nigerians believe the ideals of the great politician MKO Abiola are not imbibed. Plus TV Africa's Mary Chinda tells us more. June 12, 2020, a day that marks one of the fiercest struggles of the Nigerian state towards democracy. Right behind me is the statue of a man who is described as the hero of the June 12, 1993 struggle, Chief MKO Abiola. MKO Abiola died for a collective struggle. It's a collective responsibility that will continue to keep his memory alive and ensure that the ideas of June 12 lives. My biggest regret is that we fought for a restoration to full-blown democracy. 27 years after, looking back, MKO will not be too happy with all that is happening in this country. We were uh, of the strong opinion that those who will take over governance after the exit of the military will be mindful of the economic deprivation of our people. M. Kabiola died for all of us. So it's a collective responsibility in ensuring that we make Nigeria work in our lifetime. And that is why leaders must know that they are servants. They are there to serve. And that whatever it is, people paid the price. So therefore, their death must never be in vain. And that is why, as we mark June 12, we still have some of our demands. Good. It's been declared, after several agitation, June 12 has been declared a democracy day. There will be public holidays on June 12. To talk more on the significance of the day is frontline pro-June 12 activist and a participant in the struggle for the recognition of the day as Democracy Day. I'm talking about Dr. Joe Odumaki. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. My pleasure. Thank you. Reiterating the importance of the day can never be overemphasized. Just talk us through why this day continues to be essential and needs to be celebrated. The day continues to be essential because it was the day Nigeria spoke with one voice, loud and clear, against all forms of Asian chains that has held us down as a country. These chains, I'm talking about, chains on ethnic and religious bigotry were broken. The North-South divide that has kept our people apart even before independence was obliterated. The handshake was not just across the Niger, but also across the Benue and the confluence of Nokoja. So it was a day when we were no longer mere geographical expression, where we had various tribes, tongues, pulling Uh, doctor, can you hear me? From different directions and speak. Yes. yes. Okay, uh, the network went up for a bit. Go ahead. It was a day the age long antagonism and animosities gave way to unity, cooperation, nationalistic and patriotic fervor never before as weakness in these shores. So to also quote the words of assassinated military head of state, that General, General Morit Alam Mohamed, it was the day Nigeria truly came of age. So June 12 has remained the watershed. It has remained an election that we we'll always make reference to as the free experience and most peaceful and judged both nationally and internationally. A day that was rancor free, no violence, and the day the electorate spoke with one voice, it was loud and clear. And the message was MKO is our man. No. So no one ever missed the message. Okay. Even including those who bellyate 
at hearing the message. So June 12 continues to be significant. It remains a reference point. It remains a day that we will never, ever forget. And that was why after about 25 years of the popular agitation that June 12 made at Democracy Day two years ago, we had it as a Democracy Day. Okay, Some let, people... let's, let's, let's look at matters arising from that. While you seem um, happy with the declaration of June 12 as a Democracy Day, last week, when I think I was the one that spoke with you, you seemed dissatisfied with the efforts of the federal government, uh, despite what many have uh, described as unexpected, um, you know, behavior from uh, administration as part declaring this day uh, a Democracy Day. What more? are you asking for? My ask is very simple. If we are talking about Democracy Day, have we kept the ideals of that democracy? In an election that was freest, fairest, and most peaceful, was rank of free, no violence, how are we seeing the elections that is taking place? Hitting up the quality, people balloting with their blood, that is not what it should be. Again, people spoke with one voice in unity. We're talking about ballot integrity. For us to have ballot integrity, the political players must ensure that they play by the rules of the game. Government must demonstrate enough political will. INEC must be independent, as the name connotes. So, talking about June 12, that binding force should never ever be forgotten. Today is being marked as Democracy Day. In having democracy take place, justice, fairness, and equity must triumph at all times. And that's why one still feels that a Judicial Commission of Inquiry must, uh, must be put in place to ascertain how MKO was killed because I cannot 27, af 27 years after I cannot bid MKO a final farewell. If I have to do that, then we have to know what killed him and that those who killed him must be brought to book. As we also mark June 12, I mean, look at everywhere in terms of religion, ethnicity, the gap is widening. We've seen killings headsmen, uh, we've seen all, all our roads have become un, unsafe, we've seen terrorists. I'm so Thank sad you. that okay. a young girl like Leah Shraibu has not been reunited. We see a lot of our guests, a lot of our, our mothers, our fathers are still with the terrorists. If we are talking okay. about true democracy, Dr. we must have all these people reunited with us. And uh, one thing again is that they have, have kept on saying that there should be the posthumous declaration of MK Abiola as a past president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We all know what uh, the June 12th uh, election result is all about, although we still need it uh, gazetted as belatedly, uh, the result has belatedly declared by the former, by the uh, umpire. Dr. Then. Odumaki, I need to interject, yeah. and um, you, you, you are expressing a lot of stuff that needs to be addressed uh, for us to truly um, say we are in a democracy and that we are honoring um, June 12. But what is your reaction? The president's speech is one of the longest in a long time, and he tried to capture as many areas of our national uh, cohesion that he could. He talked about um, the safety of women. He talked about what is being done. He talked about the COVID-19 situation and the management of it. He talked about the economy, which has been affected globally and not just in Nigeria. A lot of issues um, were touched on. So I don't know if you saw the speech, but does it work for you? Does it genuinely tell you that efforts are being made to make our democracy one that truly deserves the name? Well, from the I mean, speech that I listened to, uh, a very, very long speech, with the president try to say some things. And some of the areas that uh, the president talked on, he talked about the rise in rape cases, 
uh, mentioned the fact that the Ministry of Women Affairs, I mean, is up and doing. The police uh, will also do a lot more. And then the police trust fund, we search, the police should be able to, I mean, do more. But, uh, and then the, the doubt of the deterrence. So one thing in that area that the president lucidly made reference to is okay. that a lot of work needs to be done. Oh, Again, time factor. I'm sorry I keep interjecting. Due to time factor, I'd like you to talk about the lessons of June 12 that it seems um, our politicians and leaders are not taking, taking into cognizance the situation we have now. For instance, in Edo, uh, the election is uh, scheduled to uh, hold soon. Their primaries uh, is causing a lot of issues, and then we know that Ondo is going to come. Basically, this target elections. What are the lessons we are not learning from the events of June 12th. June 12th, build up to the election of June 12th. We had about 23 political parties, then we, it then became uh, two political parties. The day of the election, the political players, the politicians, the MKO and other, uh, MK Abiola and other contestants played by the rules. There was no heating of the policy, despite the fact that we were in military dictatorship there. Now, the lessons that we should learn is that June 12 was about free choice, no violence. We just want, I just want to plead with the political players that they should realize that heating up the policy will not help anyone. They should also know that their body language, their followers, if, if whatever they utter is violence prone, their followers will also dance to uh, their tunes. So as we prepare for Ondo and Do elections, I want to plead with the political players that they must play by the rules of the game. And INEC has promised to remain an impartial arbiter. We will continue to fully follow that. Primaries remains very, very important because at the end of each primary that will be conducted, then the candidates will come. We want the political parties that will organize the primaries to ensure that everything is done in a very peaceful and transparent manner. June 12th election results, it was generally accepted. There was no litigation. So from the primaries, we are going to get the candidates. It starts with such. So we are all going to fully and diligently follow up with the primaries in ensuring that anyone that the candidates agreed on. It will have been something that is, will have been fairly done, there will have been due process, so that at the end, if parties have their candidates, they will, we are not going to have problems. Okay. That, that lesson is very important and it must be learned. Then, talking about the sanctity of that process, talking about ballot integrity, our politicians must learn that whatever happens and without learning the the lessons of june 12 the sacrifices of our heroes and heroine will be in vain if after 27 years we have not learned to be peaceful we have not learned to be fair we have not learned to put up aside violence and all those things that uh, divide us as a country then I'm afraid that we have not we have not learned anything. I also want our political players not to play on the intelligence of our people, poverty level, the I mean the cardinal goal of uh, that party SDP was farewell to poverty. So our people are impoverished. Let's ensure that vote buying should be extinguished from the lexicon of our electoral process. Dr. So that do, when people... um, I, I keep interrupting you. Um, I must say thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and your insight on the matter of June 12 and the democracy in this country. My pleasure, always. All right, do take care, ma'am.